When something scary happens, it's very hard to react in a quick and cold-headed manner. Most of us panic or freeze up. However, if you pre-think scenarios before they happen, you can effectively pre-program your subconscious to react when that event actually does happen. For example, you're about to go on vacation and someone attacks you. Number 1. Attacked if someone grabs hold of you on the street, stamp down hard with your heel onto the arch of their foot. Do this as hard as you possibly can because it will cause your attacker a lot of pain so you should be able to free yourself and run. If your stamp didn't immobilize the attacker by breaking one of the many bones in their foot, it will certainly slow them down. Unfortunately, you don't manage to get away from your attacker and they put you in the trunk of their car. 2. Kidnapped Try to remain calm. Most cars made after 2002 have a trunk release inside the trunk, and some of them glow in the dark. If it doesn't, try to locate it by touch. If the car doesn't have a trunk release, try to locate the locking mechanism. If the model of the car has a lever to open the trunk near the driver's seat, you should be able to locate the cable that actuates it. Find it and pull it. If the vehicle has neither of these, try searching for tools in the trunk. Search the false floor underneath you for the spare tire and tire changing tools. Try using a screwdriver to pry the trunk open. If this doesn't work, locate the brake lights and yank the cables out. No working tail lights might draw attention to the vehicle. Try to locate the nuts holding the brake light housing itself. These are normally designed to be removed by hand. Once you've removed them, push the housing out onto the road and stick your arm out to signal for help. If none of this works, start shouting, banging and kicking. Even if this doesn't get anyone's attention, it will force your attacker to stop to get you to shut up. As soon as they open the trunk, attack them with the car jack, lug wrench or anything else you might have found in the trunk. Once you're free, you try to get back to your car and begin your road trip, but as you're driving along, your car brakes stop working. Number 3. Car Brakes Put on your emergency lights to warn other drivers that you're having problems. Try pumping the brake pedal to see if you can get the brakes to work. If you're driving an automatic, move the gear selector to the L, the low range position. If you're driving a manual, slowly drop down through the gears using the engine as a brake. Gently begin to pull on the handbrake, don't be too abrupt as this could cause you to lose control of the vehicle. If you still can't stop the car, look out for an emergency braking zone or an escape lane. If none are available, look for crash barriers alongside the road and gently move the car towards the barriers, prepare yourself for a lot of noise and then as smoothly as possible rub the side of the car against them, slowly turning more and more into the barrier as you use it to slow the car down. After stopping the car and finding your way to the hotel, you take the elevator to your room but the elevator stops and begins to fall. Number 4. Elevator Despite what people may think, trying to jump just before impact isn't a good idea. Firstly, it would be very difficult to time this correctly. Secondly, you would probably hit your head on the top of the elevator and land badly. And thirdly, even if you did execute this maneuver perfectly, it would only slow you down about 3 miles per hour. Another misconception is that standing with your knees bent would absorb the impact. But this method would concentrate the force of the impact onto your legs and then through your skeleton, breaking bones on its way through. The best method method is to lie down on your back with one hand behind your head and the other in front. This will spread the force of the impact over your body and through your compressible muscles, tissues and organs and it will also reduce the impact on your vertical bones. This method will only work if the elevator has some sort of drag affecting it, like cables rubbing or the brakes actuating. If the elevator is in total freefall, you will be experiencing a kind of weightlessness and will not be able to prepare for impact, apart from maybe saying a prayer or two. After arriving somewhat aggressively in the hotel lobby, you decide to go for a walk to calm your nerves. But suddenly you find yourself trapped inside a panicked crowd of people. Number 5. Mob Stay calm and don't fight the flow. Raise your hands in a defensive position and use your arms to fend off pushes and shoves from the crowd and follow the flow, moving slowly but surely to the edge of the crowd. The most important thing is to remain on your feet. If you fall over, you will probably get trampled. If despite your best efforts, you do get knocked down, keep moving with the crowd, whether on all fours or rolling, and use that motion to regain your feet as soon as possible. You manage to reach the edge of the crowd and you watch as they carry on running down the street. You look back and see that they were running from a tornado. 
Number 6. Tornado Get into the closest building you can. If the building has a basement, go down there. Grab a blanket or a sleeping bag and get under a solid table or under a mattress to protect yourself. If the building doesn't have a basement, look for a central room with no exterior windows. The more walls that are between you and the tornado, the better. Once again, grab a mattress or duvet or anything you can to cover yourself with to protect yourself from falling debris. You survive the tornado, you get out from under the mattress and think that perhaps taking a vacation wasn't such a good idea. You book a flight home, the flight home passes through the Bermuda Triangle, but you think, hey, what's the worst that can happen? If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and subscribe for more.